सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट्स मोमेंट्स एन इंग्लिश ऑडियो टेक्स्ट बुक फॉर क्लास नाइन्थ नेरिटेड बाय निवेदिता सरदार नाउ लेट एस लिसन टू लेसन नंबर सिक्स वेदरिंग द स्टॉम इन एयर समर फ्रॉम पेज नंबर थर्टी सेवन टू फोर्टी थ्री द ऑथर इज हर्ष मंदेर इंट्रोडक्शन The cyclone that hit Orissa in October 1999 killed thousands of people and devastated hundreds of villages. For two dreadful nights, Prashant, a young man, was marooned on the roof of a house. On the third day, he decided to go to his village. Did he find his family? Let us listen to Weathering the Storm in Erzurum. On 27th October 1999, seven years after his mother's death, Prashant had gone to the block headquarters of Erzurum, a small town in coastal Orissa, some 18 kilometers from his village, to spend the day with a friend. In the evening a dark and menacing storm quickly gathered winds beat against the houses with a speed and fury that prashant had never witnessed before heavy and incessant rain filled the darkness ancient trees were uprooted and crashed to the earth screams rent the air as people and houses were swiftly washed away the angry waters swirled into his friend's house neck deep the building was of brick and mortar and was strong enough to survive the devastation of the wind's velocity of 350 kilometers per hour but the cold terror of the family grew with the crashing of trees that had got uprooted and fallen on their house sometime in the middle of the night damaging its roofs and walls the crazed destruction wrought by the cyclone and the surge of the ocean continued for the next 36 hours although wind speeds had reduced somewhat by the next morning to escape the waters rising in the house prashant and his friend's family had taken refuge on the roof prashant will never forget the shock he experienced at his first glimpse of the devastation wrought by the super cyclone in the gray light of the early morning a raging deadly brown sheet of water covered everything as far as the eye could see only fractured cement houses still stood in a few places bloated animal carcasses and human corpses floated in every direction all round even huge old trees had fallen two coconut trees had fallen on the roof of their house This was a blessing in disguise because the tender coconuts from the trees kept the trapped family from starving in the several days that followed. For the next 2 days, Prashant sat huddled with his friend's family in the open on the rooftop. They froze in the cold and incessant rain The rain water washed away Prashant's tears. The only thought that flashed through his mind was whether his family had survived the fury of the super cyclone. Was he to be bereaved once again? 2 days later, which seemed to Prashant like 2 years, the rain ceased and the rain waters slowly began to recede. Prashant was determined to seek out his family 
without further delay. But the situation was still dangerous and his friend's family pleaded with Prashant to stay back a little while longer. But Prashant knew he had to go. He equipped himself with a long, sturdy stick and then started on his 18-kilometer expedition back to his village through the swollen flood waters. It was a journey he would never forget. He constantly had to use his stick to locate the road to determine where the water was most shallow. At places, it was waist deep and progress was slow. At several points, he lost the road and had to swim. After some distance, he was relieved to find two friends of his uncle who were also returning to their village. They decided to move ahead together. As they waded through the waters, the scenes they witnessed grew more and more macabre. They had to push away many human bodies, men, women, children and carcasses of dogs, goats and cattle that the current swept against them as they moved ahead. In every village, that they passed, they could barely see a house standing. Prashant now wept out loud and long. He was sure that his family could not have survived this catastrophe. Eventually, Prashant reached his village, Kalikuda. His heart went cold. Where their home once stood, there were only remnants of its roof. Some of their belongings were caught, mangled and twisted in the branches of trees just visible above the dark waters. Young Prashant decided to go to the Red Cross shelter to look for his family. Among the first people he saw in the crowd was his maternal grandmother. Weak with hunger, she rushed to him, her hands outstretched, her eyes brimming. It was a miracle. They had long given him up for dead. Quickly, word spread and his extended family gathered around him and hugged him tight in relief. Prashant anxiously scanned the motley, battered group. His brother and sister, his uncles and aunts, they all seemed to be there. By the next morning, as he took in the desperate situation in the shelter, he decided to get a grip over himself. He sensed a deathly grief settling upon the 2,500 strong crowd in the shelter. 86 lives were lost in the village. All the 96 houses had been washed away. It was their fourth day at the shelter. So far, they had survived on green coconuts, but there were too few to go around, such a tumult of people. Prashant, all of 19 years, decided to step in as leader of his village, if no one else did. He organized a group of youths and elders to jointly pressurize the merchant once again to part with his rice. This time, the delegation succeeded and returned triumphantly wading through the receding waters with food for the entire shelter. No one cared that the rice was already rotting. 
branches from fallen trees were gathered to light a reluctant and slow fire on which to cook the rice for the first time in 4 days the survivors at the cyclone shelter were able to fill their bellies his next task was to organize a team of youth volunteers to clean the shelter of filth urine vomit and floating carcasses and to tend to the wounds and fractures of the many who had been injured on the 5th day a military helicopter flew over the shelter and dropped some food parcels it then did not return the youth task force gathered empty utensils from the shelter then they deputed the children to lie in the sand left by the waters around the shelters with these utensils on their stomachs to communicate to the passing helicopters that they were hungry the message got through and after that the helicopter made regular rounds of the shelter air dropping food and other basic needs prashant found that a large number of children had been orphaned he brought them together and put up a polythene sheet shelter for them women were mobilized to look after them while the men secured food and materials for the shelter as the weeks passed prashant was quick to recognize that the women and children were sinking deeper and deeper in their grief he persuaded the women to start working in the food for work program started by an ngo and for the children he organized sports events he himself loved to play cricket and so he organized cricket matches for children prashant engaged with other volunteers in helping the widows and children to pick up the broken pieces of their lives the initial government plan was to set up institutions for orphans and widows however this step was successfully resisted as it was felt that in such institutions children would grow up without love and widows would suffer from stigma and loneliness prashant's group believed orphans should be resettled in their own community itself possibly in new foster families made up of childless widows and children without adult care it is 6 months after the devastation of the super cyclone this time prashant's wounded spirit has healed simply because he had no time to bother about his own pain his handsome youthful face is what the widows and orphaned children of his village seek out most in their darkest hour of grief glossary menacing dangerous and harmful incessant unceasing continual swirled moved or flowed along with a whirling motion carcasses dead bodies of animals bereaved lost a close relation or friend through his or her death remnants small remaining quantities motley disparate varied in appearance or character 
Tumult, uproar of a disorderly crowd. Think about it. One, what havoc has the super cyclone wreaked in life of the people of Orissa? Two, how has Prashant, a teenager, been able to help the people of his village? Three. How have the people of the community helped one another? What role do the women of Kalikuda play during these days? Four. Why do Prashant and other volunteers resist the plan to set up institutions for orphans and widows? What alternatives do they consider? Five. Do you think Prashant is a good leader? Do you think young people can get together to help people during natural calamities? Talk about it. Talk about the preparedness of the community for a natural disaster. You can talk about evacuation plans. and rehabilitation permanent safe shelters warning systems relief efforts building materials to withstand cyclone flood earthquake that is safe housing people's organization of their own rescue the survival instinct etc suggested reading a home on the street by harsh mandir paying for his tea by harsh mandir eton munda 1 the battle by mahashweta devi moments you were just listening to this english audio textbook for class 9th narrated by nivedita sardar technical direction satish lade Sound recording Amita Bhatti and Bati Langlingdo assistance in production Dau Dayal Chaturvedi produced and presented by Ramesh Rani Sharma